All right, so in this video, we're looking at our last two ancient civilizations. One's located in the Indus River Valley in South Asia, and the other is called the Shang Dynasty, and that is the dynasty that was in China. The first area that we're looking at in tonight's video is called the Indus River Valley. It's the region around the Indus River. And this river is located in South Asia on a part of the continent that's called the subcontinent. Sub kind of means below or beneath. So it's at the bottom part of Asia, and it's where modern day India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh are. Important things to know about this region is that in the Indus River Valley, the climate is usually warm, but it's very much affected by seasonal winds that are called monsoons. There's two different types of monsoons. In the winter, the monsoon winds blow air from the northeast, which bring dry air and mild temperatures. But in the summer, it's the opposite. Um, the monsoon winds blow air from the southwest, which brings heavy rain that, that cause flooding into the area. And this flooding enriches the soil because the river overflows and brings up minerals onto the farmland. But it can also drown people and their animals, as well as destroy villages. So even though the summer monsoon rains are dangerous, people living in the Indus River Valley still rely on those monsoon rains to bring water for the crops and to prevent famine, which means shortages of food. So this area, the Indus River Valley, was home to an ancient civilization around 2500 BC. It was home to several major cities, and they were all laid out in a grid pattern of straight streets much like some of our major cities today. These cities in the Indus River Valley had citadels, which were fortresses, and we think that they might have been used for government or religious centers. We're not sure. The Indus River Valley also had homes that were several stories high, and most of these homes, believe it or not, included a bathroom with drains to the street and a brick sewer system, which was very, very organized for this point in history. So a few more things to know about life in the Indus River Valley. Most of the people who lived there were farmers. They worked the land growing wheat, barley, rice, and cotton. And when these farmers had food surpluses, it allowed other people living in the civilization to focus on innovating and creating technologies in other areas, mostly economic areas such as industry or commerce. People living in the Indus River Valley made tools out of bronze and copper. So they were skilled at metalworking, and they also worked with silver, and they made jewelry out of gold, shells, and ivory. People living in the Indus River Valley mass-produced, which means made a lot of at the same time, in the same way, clay pots, and they also created cotton cloth. They used pictograms for communication, and historians believe that the people living in the Indus River Valley worshipped animal and human-like gods that were associated with nature and natural forces, like the sun, the wind, the rain. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second civilization, which is the Shang Dynasty in China. One of the main rivers that really gave life to the Shang Dynasty was called the Huanghe, or the Yellow River, and it's a major river in eastern China that drains into the Yellow Sea. Now, this river is also sometimes called the Great Sorrow because of the tragedy brought on by its floods. The flooding is dangerous, but it brings rich soil to the area that helped with farming and agriculture. The region, additionally, also enjoys a favorable climate that helps with farming. In looking back in Chinese history, a lot of historians start the history of China with the Shang Dynasty around 1700 BC because they're the first dynasty that had written records, and they lasted until 1000 BC. In the Shang Dynasty, kings were political leaders, but they also had some very important religious roles. People believed that the kings could communicate with their nature gods, and because of this, kings were in charge of praying, making offerings, and performing sacrifices, in order to gain a good harvest, or to get a change in weather, or even to secure a victory in an upcoming battle. People also believed that kings could communicate with ancestors. And the way this worked, it was something very interesting, 
that priests would scratch a question on an animal bone or a tortoise shell. They would then apply intense heat, often putting this over a fire, to the bone or the shell until it would crack. Then the priest king would read the patterns in the crack and interpret the ancestors' answers. Now these bones were called oracle bones, and they were the first examples of writing in China. Some other notable achievements of the Shang Dynasty civilization is that they used a script with written characters. Only a few people could read or write, but they were the first people in China to develop a writing system. Their capital city of Anyang had a palace, a temple, public buildings, workshops, and homes. It was very organized. The Shang also perfected metalworking skills to make cauldrons, chariots, daggers, and statues. And they worked with ivory and silk to create some very, very beautiful pieces of art.